What's Crackalack and TGM Unbox? Welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and setting up this Ender 2 Pro 3D printer. This is actually my third Ender 2 Pro that I purchased in the past like two months because I absolutely love this printer. I won't be doing a full review. That full review will be coming out in the near future. I just wanted more time with the other printers that I have just so I can give a good baseline and explanation as to why I like this printer so much. But I will be covering some of those points in this video and also showing you what's included in the box when you check it out. I purchased this one on Amazon. I will have a link for it down below. I purchased it myself, did not get sent this at all. It was it was all my money, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> so let's crack it open and uh, get to it. It's, it should be pretty easy. I, I've actually had a lot of experience with the Ender 3 Pro and the Ender 3 V2 and also the Aquila 3D printers. That are, Those are all the same kind of style. So those are actually a little bit harder to set up than this printer. This printer for a newbie, you can get set up in a matter of like minutes. Let's crack it open and get started. I was actually super excited to open this, uh, but I ended up waiting so I could film this video. I was just gonna jump into it without filming and stuff but I want to get an unboxing on camera. Uh, I've already purchased these a couple times, so I just want to share that with you guys in case you're planning on purchasing one of these printers. It's honestly like the best recommended printer, um, in my personal opinion, for anyone that wants to get started in 3D printing. There are a couple things with the printer that make it seem like it's not the best for beginners, but I'll jump into that and explain to you why it could be a good printer if you're just getting into it. So crack and open the top, we can pull off this plastic foam and uh, we have our little instruction manual. And that's what the printer will look like once we're done with it. We also have some free filament and this is just some extra stuff and some tools and stuff that are extremely helpful when you're printing for a long time. We also have our little filament holder. This is what's gonna hold our filament up. And the power cord, this is of course important. This is what the little screen looks like. This is where you control the printer. So let's lift up the foam and that reveals the rest of the printer. So from this, I think we just lift it out of the actual box. But you can see inside of here, we have the bed and the hot end and the Z rod and everything else. So let's take out some of these small pieces and then lift up the printer. Okay, so then you're gonna take the printer out. Uh -huh. Now the first thing that you're gonna notice once you take the printer out of the box is just how light it is. If you have any experience with any other printers like an Ender 3 uh, or any other different brand of 3D printers, they're traditionally pretty heavy. Most of the time they're using an aluminum body so the entire thing's aluminum and a metal. Uh, but for this, the base of this unit is actually plastic. So it is really light. You can feel the power supply in the bottom. That's where a lot of the weight is. But overall, the rest of the unit is really light. And with this, you're only getting one aluminum rail and the rail isn't really that big compared to other printers. So you're definitely cutting back a lot on the weight. This has a lot of pros. If you're trying to travel with this, it also has a nice handle. So you're able to bring this around. I actually recommended this for my friend that's in college that wants a 3D printer. That way he can bring his printer to his dorms. And when he has to go home for the weekend or during summer, he can just lift it up and bring it home really easily without having to disassemble a massive 3D printer. So that's great that it's able to just be brought around everywhere. But a downside with that is if you are just staying stationary with your 3D printer and you're just staying still printing all the time, it's not extremely sturdy. So it can wiggle around on your base plate with little feet pads. Since it's light, if you're pulling out the filament, you can actually pull the whole printer away. And that has happened to me a couple times. So I might need to secure it to some cinder blocks or something or some brick so that it doesn't wiggle or move when I'm pulling on it. Um, but that was one issue that I did notice with its light body. But overall, it's nice to have a lighter printer. These are the amazing little snips that all printers basically come with. You will definitely use these a lot if you're printing. Uh, basically, you use these to cut so many different things. You use these to cut the plastic when you're putting it into the 3D printer. You just use it a lot. This is a roll of filament. I've never even used the filament it comes with um, just because it's not that much and I like to keep the colors I have. You will need to buy filament. That is one thing. If this is completely new for you in 3D printing, you will need to buy rolls of plastic Plastic. And they're pretty cheap. You can get them on Amazon. I'll be having a review of all the filament that I use. I've bought like over 50 rolls. That is expensive um, because each roll is about like 20 to $30. So when you're buying them, it adds up definitely, but it depends what you're, what you're printing really. But let's look in the instructions. So it's, it's really simple. A lot of other 3D printers, you'll have to do a lot more work, but these are all plug and play and there's only like 10 bolts that it comes with that you have to install. So yeah, overall pretty easy. I, I probably should make like a, a beginner's guide to 3D printing just so I have a good starting ground if you're brand new to it. 
If you're an experienced 3D printer, uh, hopefully that this isn't too boring if I'm reiterating a lot of these things because it's usually common knowledge once you get into the hobby. But if you're new to it, it might be all new to you. One nice thing about assembling this printer is that it has everything labeled. So all the bags with the screws, they're all labeled so it's really convenient and easy for you to set up. So since they're all labeled, it really cuts down on the guesswork. You don't have to be worried if you use the right screws or not. So it's nice that they labeled all of them. <laughs> So you're first gonna install these little nuts at the front of the printer. And another great thing about all these 3D printers is they do come with the tool kits and all the tools that you'll need to assemble it. It's really helpful if you ever need to do repairs or maintenance in the future. Um, you have all the things that this printer will need, every single one, even the super tiny Allen keys that you won't really ever use. Like look how tiny this thing is. That thing's so tiny. Oh wait, this one's even tinier. Look at this thing. Um, so I'm just gonna tighten in this nut. So I do really love this printer. I love how small it is. Um, a lot of people complained about the bed size. They don't really think it makes sense to have such a small build plate because this is all you're really printing with. This is the size and most of the enders are usually like this big by this big. So you are giving up some of that, that, that real estate. But I realize that a lot of things that I end up printing are never that big. They're never bigger than like eight inches or nine inches. I don't really understand why I would need a printer to be that big if I'm never even using that real estate. And another thing with that is when you have those big beds, you're using a lot of power to heat that entire bed because the printer bed is being heated and that's what helps have the printer stick and prevent warping so you're using a lot of extra power to heat up that big build size but when you're doing a small print and you're actually using all the space and you're heating it it uses a lot less power to heat it and I have noticed that these printers heat up a lot faster when you're doing your prepping uh, to warm them up than the other ender printers just because there's a lot smaller of a bed size and the beds usually use a lot more power than the hot end so I'm just taking out another set of these nuts and we're gonna go underneath and install them. Another cool thing about this printer is it is using one of the updated boards from Creality um, and the board is silent. So you're not gonna have the stepper motors, you're not gonna hear the robotic noises, which can be fun and cool sometimes, uh, but when you're printing for a long time and you just hear that noise in your bedroom or in your room that you're in, it can definitely be annoying. But with this updated board, you won't hear it. Um, the only thing you will notice is the fans are kind of loud. The fans can be pretty loud on this printer. Um, there are ways that you can upgrade them and change them out to like Noctua fans or other fans, which might be something I do in the future. If you wanna see a video on that, let me know to make these printers a little bit more quiet when you're in a room. When I first got started, I noticed that it was a little bit harder to level this bed than my other printers. One of the reasons is the fact that these bed knobs are super tiny. These are kind of hard to reach your fingers under. Although I do have pretty big hands, it's kind of hard to reach under and twist these to make sure that the bed's level. So that is that is one thing. Um, I don't really blame Creality because it's hard for them to put large wheels under this since this is such a small bed. It is a little, a little time consuming to try dialing in that, especially if you have bigger hands. So be careful with that. So now we're gonna be installing the spool holder and all that does is go right here and this is gonna be holding our filament, um, the roll of plastic, while we're printing. So you just have to easily plug it in right here and then crank it down with a single bolt. We're literally done with the spool holder and the main assembly. Now we're just gonna be bolting on the top handle. And uh, like I said, this can be great if you're traveling and you can just bring your printer with you anywhere you go. And that was literally it for all the installation. They gave us all these extra tools and these are gonna be used later on if you have to do any repairs, but we're done with with screwing on everything. Now all we have to do is plug in some really easy pre-labeled connectors. You just plug them right in, you follow the directions, super simple. I'm gonna do that really quickly uh, and here we go. And that that's literally it. <laughs> And now everything's connected, and I think our final step is just to plug in the display, and that's it. And there's just a ribbon cable right here at the end. We peel off the tape, and we plug in the display, and then push her in. Nice. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. That is that is literally all it takes in less than 20 minutes since I started unboxing this. We're already ready to print. That's impressive. Uh, we will need to plug this in. I'm just gonna start it up really quick. I don't think I'm gonna print anything in this video. Uh, like I said, there will be an upcoming video where I show you this printer at its fullest and I get to explain all my benefits and other things that I've noticed with printing. Also, uh, one thing before you turn it on, you do have to set the power voltage to the right one. In the US, I think it's the one 15 uh, if you're in Europe or somewhere else you'll have to set it to that accordingly But make sure you do set that now it is plugged in so I'm gonna go plug her in and then we flip the switch and you're gonna hear the fans kick on So get ready for that 
Yeah, they're, they're kind of loud. They're not like obnoxiously loud, like they're pretty loud though. <laughs> I also do recommend you right when you set up, I'm gonna turn it off real quick. Right when you set up the printer that you do a preheat cycle outside or in a well-ventilated room. Um, what that's gonna do is heat up the hot end and the bed at the same time. And it's gonna let any of the manufacturing oils or anything else kind of burn off. Uh, usually when you do this inside, you'll get like a nasty mechanical smell. Not saying it's like bad for you, but I wouldn't really trust it, you know? So I'd recommend doing that outside or in a well-ventilated room so that you're able to let it all gas out and you don't have to inhale any of that nasty stuff. But yeah, that is the pre printer. I, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think. Um, once you also get this, you will need to do some adjustments. I'll probably make a video on that too, um, just to make sure that this printer is functioning at its best. You don't want the bed or the nozzle to be too tight when it's rolling on the different axes. Uh, so I'll be sharing that in a, in a future video. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy. Peace. Wow.